Okay, so let's talk through the Williams essay for this week. Um, he's looking at Acts 2, and he is comparing it to what? Apartheid, exactly, because what's his context? South Africa, bingo. So we've read Williams before. We're familiar with how he's going to be reading. Um, and what he's specifically looking at then is um, right there at the beginning, he says the essence of the political problem is how to get people who are different in so many ways to live together. How can they be persuaded to treat, treat each other in a humane way without injustice and oppression, right? This is happening in the United States. It's also happened in South Africa. He talks about right away that the Bible was used to justify apartheid. It was also used to justify slavery. So he's looking at Acts 2 and he's seeing these people are coming together. They sell all their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need, right? The point that he wants to make here right at the beginning um, is that these were different groups of people, very diverse groups of people, yet they came together, right? That's what he says at the end. It's, um, this group is characterized not by the word separation, but by its opposite together. So just before that, he wants to point out the way in which um, South Africa, again, many different groups of people, but specifically the way in which apartheid, right, this enforced segregation, much like what we were talking about before, Jim Crow laws in the South, right, this happened until 1994, enforced segregation, whereas white Afrikaners were um, allowed a lot of privileges that black um, African, South Africans were not. Uh, questions then that Williams is asking is, will the South African attempt to succeed when so many other nations have continued to experience tremendous internal friction and when the splitting of countries has not um, has, has been a not infrequent event, welding together different groups is by no means a simple endeavor. So really this is still a question then, is it possible to find after such division, uh, right, and racial segregation, is it possible to bring all these people together to have true reconciliation and reparation? So he now, then he talks about Acts 2 and then specifically speaks to, in the next paragraph, the way in which Jews maintain a rigid separation from Gentiles, right? Remember, Jews believed that they were chosen by God. Gentiles were not. Jesus himself actually reflects this view um, when he's dealing with the Canaanite woman uh, or the Phoenician woman from Syria, who, who he references as a dog, right? Um, there's a way in which Jews kept themselves from Gentiles. Jews were seen as pure, chosen by God. Gentiles they saw as impure, right? Paul then, as an apostle to the Gentiles, felt that he was there to bridge that gap. Um, so he writes, perhaps there was a similarity of cause and that the Jews saw their distinctiveness in a belief that God had chosen them. This is Deuteronomy 7.7 7, that's being used to justify this. Likewise, it, even if it may be argued that the British must be reckoned um, culpable in their attitudes to the non-white population of South Africa, the belief of the Africaners um, that they were the chosen people of God reinforced and motivated an ethos of separation. Again, so the Afrikaners had the same belief that they were chosen by God, much like, as we talked about in a previous video, the way in which Western Europeans believed that they were chosen by God and were justified in um, the, the genocide of, of millions of indigenous Americans, right? And then also the enslavement of, um, of Africans uh, here in the United States. So uh, he goes on to talk about Acts 2, the early church was uh, not a manifestation of communism, according to Williams. He says, even if there was an amazing practice of sharing, it was not uh, equality, but an expression of love, right? That was what was behind all of this, the fruit of the spirit, so that nobody was any longer in need. Interestingly, though, right, here's the connection between Acts 2 and Galatians 3. So there's a leveling of differences, right, um, in the sense that there was no longer a hierarchy, no, neither Jew nor Greek, slave or free, right? So in some sense, the idea of the Holy Spirit and Acts coming upon the people then created uh, unity, right? Um, it was, and this is what Williams writes, the interpenetration of the person so that they were absolutely equal while also preserving distinction. So there's a way in which um, there's a little bit of a tension in what Williams is saying because clearly uh, he's encouraging equality while at the same time saying it was still not true equality that was maintained. Um, he talks about the openness and the sharing 
um, this active sharing through which differences between people were not just removed, but that the needs of all would be met. They were seen as being a part of one body of Christ, right? The term in South Africa that was used was um, diversity in unity is what they were seeking. Um, so with the coming of the Holy Spirit, they had this bond of love. Uh, so moving on, he talks, so he goes back and forth, right, between Acts 2 and then the South African context. So he goes back to the South African con context. Churches were very active in the transition from apartheid. The process of struggle was undergirded by an enormous amount of prayer, both within and outside of Africa. The transition was held up as morally correct and in accordance with biblical norms, interestingly, right, that while previously the Bible had been interpreted to support, the African church had, had interpreted to support segregation, the Bible was now being interpreted as, in fact, not supporting this. Again, this is not the first time in history where the Bible was interpreted previously in a way that would discriminate against um, and oppress people, um, and then later it was read differently, right? I also think about um, geocentrism, right? Remember, uh, back in the day, Galileo was seen as a heretic and he was excommunicated from the church because he said that, in fact, the earth was not the center um, of, uh, of our solar system, right? But it was the sun, right? Heliocentrism was seen as unbiblical and sacrilegious. Later on, obviously, as we had access to science and could actually see the planets, we realized, oh, wow, he had it right. Um, so uh, heading back to this then, um, South Africa has declared itself a secular state and the accepted policy is pluralistic, no doubt acknowledging the existence of significant minorities from other faiths. The modern idea of tolerance is upheld and there's no longer a belief in the correctness of Christianity. It is one belief among others, as is common in the Western world, again, in a pluralistic society, which we discussed last week, and not insignificant factor is the belief that Christianity was used to justify apartheid. So that's le led people to, to um, be reticent to embrace Christianity when it was used, in fact, to justify um, to justify segregation. Um, he says the society that is um, emerging now is one of disparity. Uh, far from the sharing of the early church, South Africa is one of the most unequal societies in the modern world with all the associated danger of unrest and conflict. He says, so now it may not be as much racial as it is economic. Um, he says, still the Bible um, and Acts 2 becomes sort of an ideal to which to aspire, right? And again, I mean, it's interesting because we don't actually know what it was like. We only have stories about it. So was it this perfect? Was it this ideal? We don't know, right? Clearly someone is writing a story in which they believed that um, there was something very powerful happening that looked like a, a sharing um, of all things in common and, and an attempt to, to, to try to see others as equals. Um, anyway, something to think about.